talking about Village again, but this time it's just me and Ben. Hey everyone, welcome to the show. We are here with none other than Ben Moore. Michael Huber, I am like Obsessed. Resident Evil crazed right Obsessed. now, man. Obsessed! Like, That's why you're here, Ben! I'm gonna turn into a fucking zombie, man. <laughs> <laughs> yes, uh... For those of you out there, if you don't follow along on some of our Twitch streams where I reveal sensitive information, I told the Twitch chat at one point that Ben sent me an Albert Wesker Wikipedia post at like 1.42 in the morning. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so no, I've that's... Been, I've been thinking a lot about the lore. I actually just finished <laughs> yesterday or the day before. Like within the last two days, I just finished... Uh, RE4 playthrough. Nice. Doing separate ways as Ada Wong. Dude, never love that. never done that before because it oh. wasn't in the GameCube version. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, which is what I originally played it on. So you get those yeah. Wesker connections. <laughs> yes, <laughs> the chats with Wesker and Ada, and the voice Ada reports in between the chapters. Very good stuff. Yeah. Sick. Mm -hmm. How's uh, before we get into village? How's four treating you? When's the last time you had played it? I played it on stream not that long ago. But oh, I, that's right. And, and it's a game that, like, I feel like I'll go back to every once in a while just to get a feel for it. But I've actually only gone all the way through it one other time when it came out on the GameCube. That was yeah. that was when I played all the way through it. And so actually sitting down and going through all the, the whole thing again, I was, I was telling Abby this, my wife. I was like, I don't, like, if I were to review this game, I don't know what I would say. I don't think there's anything I don't like. <laughs> I know. Uh, I, I think I, I have a, an even higher appreciation <laughs> for Resident Evil 4 now yeah. um, than I did when I originally played Because when I originally played it, like, the Krauser QTEs were, like, a pain <laughs> in the ass. And the Krauser fight was kind of a pain in the ass. Not that I didn't like it. I just remember struggling with it a little bit. Oh, and it yeah. wasn't, now it was, like, no big deal. Just blame uh, it on the input lag. Yeah, there You'll you go. You'll be fine. You'll be fine. Lag. There you go. There yes. you go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so I wanted you here, Ben, one, because I just feel the Resident Evil hype mm -hmm. emanating from your very soul. Yeah, and, it's strong right now. <laughs> and also just because here we are now, like a week or so after release, hype has kind of died down just a little bit. You know, I think we're all thinking a little more clearly <laughs> mm -hmm. when it comes to Village. Just wanted to know how you were thinking now uh, after after all the noise and commotion and, and that it's been out for a little bit. Yeah, you're really catching me at an interesting time mm -hmm. um, because I, I know I keep bringing my wife up, but you have to understand that, like, as I'm going through this Resident Evil stuff, I'm, like, subjecting her to it. <laughs> and, like, totally. she's being forced to... She is... <laughs> God bless her soul. She has watched so much Resident Evil like the last month or so because yeah. uh, we played through resident evil 7 together and she was like this is Fun. the most interested i've been in a resident evil story awesome uh and so i thought that was really cool and then i played village on pc on, on hardcore and had a great time and i was like you know i bet because my wife liked seven so much yeah i'm gonna i'm gonna get it on ps5 i'm gonna do a ps5 standard run just nice. super chill nice. uh with her and we just finished that uh, and she liked it less than seven. Ooh. Um, she did. She wasn't as into the story. Yeah, yeah, because we talked about it on the spoiler mode. Like they kind of like toss a lot of balls up in the air and then mm. kind of bounce out of the exit. Like, oh, I'll leave you yes. with all these kind of things. Yeah, and I think <laughs> I think all the balls there. As you, that's a, such a funny way that you phrase that. <laughs> uh, I think all the balls that they're bouncing up in the air could potentially be interesting. Yeah, but they we, they just haven't been. Uh, capitalized on yet um yeah. but it's funny huber because playing it on standard after hardcore mm -hmm. i think if i had started on standard because i really like village yeah but i didn't enjoy it as much on standard and i think if yeah. i had played on standard in the beginning i don't think i would have been uh as hot on the game and i think that that is a really interesting aspect totally uh I'm, I'm always big on difficulties, but especially, Ben, in survival horror. Mm -hmm. Because it makes all those things that I love, like exploration and inventory management, matter that much more. So finding yes. that right balance is just so important. Um, yeah, and, and you and I uh, talked about it. We've talked about it a lot, because you know we talk about survival horror a lot. But I feel like we kind of uh, got into this in the spoiler mode as well. 
um, which is pretty lengthy if you want to hear more village yes. talk. But survival horror is all about having interesting decisions, right? Mm-hmm. And whatever decision you make, you either are punished or rewarded for it. And I feel like playing on standard, not that there, I, I don't want to overstate it because I do think there are decisions. I don't think it's completely gone, but it mattered a lot less. Like mm-hmm. I would get into a boss fight and be like, it doesn't really matter what I do. I know I'm going to get through it. Or, yeah. you know, like I, you just like, you just you got hit. Yeah. Crafting. Like, you got like hit, oh, it just didn't matter as much. Yeah. So, and you know, the other thing to say is that this was my second, go around so obviously Mm -hmm. things are going to be easier but um i was like this really kind of takes away i think a lot of what i enjoyed about that initial playthrough and now i'd be curious after playing standard doing village of shadows to Mm -hmm. see like on the other end of the spectrum yeah how i feel about it dude like a fresh village of shadows no new game plus or anything yeah it's so it's, it's too much i'm like yo i i surrender yeah, that's, that's right. the thing, because, like, part of the fun, right, is, like, using the stuff that you unlocked, and yeah. I haven't done that yet, so I do, I do, oh, yeah. I want to do that, I want to, uh, you know, play around with my toys, as yes. it were. But, ben, I think difficulties are so fascinating, because we all have different skill levels, and, like, every game's difficulties are just, there. you know, they, they don't follow to one universal system, so it's, like, right. easy on this game might be, like, hard on this one, and... And all that. What do you think we can do? Like, what do you think the industry can do? Or, or do you have any ideas for a way to get the right sweet spot for someone? Yeah. And I, I have to wonder if we, if, and I think this happens a lot with games and it, and it makes sense, you know, because like games are so complex and, and difficult to make that I think there are just certain things where it's like, okay, we know this works. So we're going to implement it. And I think that is applied to difficulty quite a bit. That's why, Mm -hmm. you know, countless games have some variation of easy, normal, hard, right? But playing Resident Evil 4, right, uh, this is a really uh, good, fresh perspective to have because when you play Resident Evil 4, there is no difficulty option that you pick. When you boot it up, you play on normal. Mm -hmm. And the dynamic difficulty in that game is like fucking wizards man <laughs> right and so for those who don't know as you are playing Resident Evil 4 it will change things depending on how well that you're you're doing and i i, I honestly think it nails it like yeah. i i wouldn't say that i i really struggled on this recent playthrough of Resident Evil 4 uh it, you know it's pretty smooth going but it was always like Tense. pushing it it was always just yeah. like you could see the knob turning up it was always tense and it was because it was always tense it was always interesting yeah and so i i wonder you know like not just for resident evil but for other games if if that kind of dynamic difficulty or even a dynamic difficulty that had kind of a wider variance yeah. uh, could be well done yes dude dynamic difficulty or i wonder too just like more specifics in the descriptions you know resident evil is pretty simple it's like normal is like you know i forget the standard uh explanation but i remember hardcore is like we'll throw everything we have at you right and the village of shadows is like survive the unsurvivable but still it's kind of vague Mm -hmm. so i'm wondering if it would be like too revealing to maybe like give you more info or or maybe if you did a prologue and then it asked you like is that was that easy or hard for you right or something like that, maybe? I don't know. Yeah, it's an interesting <laughs> point that you bring up because, like, I, I almost wonder if, like, games could do, like, a little sort of test, like you are saying with the prologue. But, yeah. like, in Resident Evil, like, 7 and 8 specifically, um, I think this is part of Resident Evil 2 Remake and 3 Remake as well, but it's like, do you know what a focus shot is? Like, do you use those or do you just shoot while they're like, okay, well, you should probably be over here or, like... Like, almost like a combat puzzle in the beginning, where it's like, yeah. we're going to give you a shotgun with two bullets, a handgun with ten bullets, and a knife. Defeat these 15 enemies, you know? It's yeah. Like, and if you can get through it, uh, you know, you can, you, we suggest a hard difficulty. You know what that reminds me of? Modern Hubert. Warfare! Modern Warfare! Yes! We're on yes! the same page! Yes! yes. Modern Warfare! Yeah, what a, what a brilliant... Uh, so brilliant! What a brilliant uh, way to gauge difficulty that that was. Yeah. That thing, that thing though, Ben... 
it always marks me lower. I'm like, dude, I swear I'm better than this, Marvel. Yeah. Warfare. That damn that's, obstacle that's course. That's the thing, though. That's why yeah. it's so good is because you have control over it. If it says, like, you we suck, play on, play on, you know, whatever, you can be like, no, I'm yeah. better than that, and you can go back in. Yes. You know, you can earn earn that uh, suggestion, as yes. it were. That's but, so uh, good. Yeah. Uh, there were a couple things that the community made me aware of for the lore that I didn't bring up on the spoiler mode, Ben, which I thought were interesting. I'd yeah. like to run a few of these by you as you're obsessed with the lore now. I am. I'm really deep in the lore. More so than I've ever been. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, so Dusk Golem uh, posted... Famous. Famous Dusk Golem posted one of the mangas. And apparently yes. in that manga is reference to the desert mission that the Hound Wolf squad went on. When they're, ban oh. when they're bantering, they're like, yeah, it was like the desert a year yeah, ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, 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 yes. Apparently you can uh, follow that in the in the manga, which is I, pretty cool. I thought you were talking about the manga that goes into the origins of Ada Wong. Oh. Which have not been explored in the games. No. Yeah. Yeah. yeah check this out. Yeah, Dude, yeah, yeah. I am I am so unfamiliar with the manga. Somebody sent me like one or two old ones a couple years back and that's it. But oh, nice, nice. There's nice. a lot that, that I don't know here. Mm -hmm. these mangas uh the other great one ben this one is a 10 scott is it about the duke it is about wesker oh okay scott vandergriff on twitter said hey huber just got g done listening to the spoiler mode i was wondering if you saw this picture in heisenberg's garage and he zooms in and it's obscured but you can see in old man with a smirk wearing sunglasses implying that wesker is still alive that top picture right there who is that i mean that is definitely <laughs> like a wesker-esque face yes like that those shades those iconic shades yeah the long hair is kind of freaking me out Totally, totally. Could be it almost, to it almost, show his age, though. It, it kind of reminds me of Spencer a little bit as well. Yeah. The, like, who is obviously face. Yeah, who's obviously connected uh, in Village, but... Yeah. So I thought that was interesting. I just want to give a shout-out to those things, because right. that was over my head the first time, second time, third time around. I never saw that photo, dude. Yeah, and, like, I... <gasps> This is a because we, we my wife and I after we finished village we had a long talk about the lore and you know I've expressed I think I've expressed this frustration in the spoiler mode but it's like because you mentioned like village throws all these balls up in the air and I do mm -hmm. think that they're interesting like I really want to know what's gonna what's going on with uh, Rose what's going on with Chris mm -hmm. um, you know is the Mega My seat like actually gone is Ethan alive all of these things yeah. It's throwing up all these balls, but there are all these other balls already in the air. <laughs> totally. Where is Leon? Where is Claire? There's, you know, where, what, where what's is going, Jill? Damn it! Where's Jill? What? It, like, especially Claire. what is going on with Alex Wesker? Yeah. You know, is she in Natalia? <laughs> what is, is up is with she the BSAA? Just chilling out in Barry's house. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What is up with the BSAA? Like, what and what hell? happened between Chris and yeah. the BSAA? Yeah, totally. And yes. so, I. I'm so interested to learn all that stuff, but I just feel like, because you, you and Brad were talking about this, I'm just worried that it'll like get shuffled to the side, a lot of those things, mm -hmm. so they can focus. Mm -hmm. Like you were talking about like the fall of Umbrella and how it kind of just felt like it happened. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. Umbrella and Chronicles. So I, I don't know. I really want that stuff to be explored, and I think, I like, I have not played a game in such a long time where I'm like, this absolutely needs DLC. Like yeah. there has, to, there are too many questions to answer that they, they need to update it as soon as possible. Perfect yeah. segue into the final segment of this episode. What do you want? What are your hopes? What are your dreams for the future of this franchise? You mentioned DLC and like, I can think of so many directions to take that. DLC oh. with the Wolfhound Squad, DLC with Mia. DLC with Lady D. <laughs> like, what do you think, Ben? What do you want? Or just straight sequel? I know you have multiple times mentioned Revelations 3 to me. So, yes. uh, so what do you think? What do you want? What do you think and what do you want? 
for the future. Um, there, there was a moment in our, in my conversation with my wife where I kind of had this epiphany and I was like, you know, I really like Code Veronica because <laughs> there's, there's kind of the, like Code Veronica does this thing where you start out as Claire, right? Who obviously mm-hmm. play in Resident Evil 2, but what's neat about the way that Code Veronica is structured is Claire is, you know, chasing after Umbrella, trying to do her job, but then trouble happens and chris her brother obviously comes and saves her and i feel like what's frustrating about the the way that they present resident evil so many times is like everything just feels so isolated right Mm -hmm. like chris is doing all this stuff you know he's he's involved uh with the bsaa like what's what where is claire is she not concerned like what's the correspondence there Mm -hmm. and i think going back to resident evil 7 what made not a hero so exciting is, yes. you know, that major moment at the end of Resident Evil 7 where you're like, oh, Chris is here. Like, they're, they're, they're tying this back into the yes. rest of Resident Evil lore. And not only are they tying it in, but we're going to get to see things from Chris's perspective. Mm-hmm. And so that's what I want. And I think Village, more so than 7 even, kind of does a better job of tying it to the overall totally. scope of Resident Evil. Mm-hmm. But... I want to play as those perspectives. So it could yes. be the um, the Hound Wolf Squad, I think, would be good. Um, I think Ada Wong DLC Ada. makes so much sense. Ada Wong, like, Ada. you can see how she would fit into the game perfectly. Yeah. Uh, so I, I think Ada would be my number one. But um, I know what? this is kind of taboo, but when we mention, like, Hound Wolf Squad DLC... Mm-hmm. I want like four player co op. Same, you know? same. Great or, place I don't to put how it. Many members are in, yeah. Great place to put stuff like that, Ben, for DLC, co op, DLC. I'm always a fan. And then you can just tack that on to mercenaries while you're at it. Co op action. Yeah. And you know what? Throw <laughs> some more mercenary stages yes. out there while you're at it. Give us classic would, location. Yeah. Would you want classic locations like uh, Baker House and, and maybe Spencer Mansion or RPD? Oh, man. You know, Huber, I hadn't thought of it before, but you mentioned Baker House. It would be cool to have, like, Resident Evil 8 enemies in yeah. sort of the Baker settings. Because that would be kind of completely transformative, mm-hmm. I would think. Yeah, yeah. Freaking drill really men cool. walking through the house. Because mm-hmm. <laughs> the, the band footage, the... Um, where you're playing is Clancy. I love the way that they use Clancy in the band yeah. stuff. He gets uh, beat up. Yeah, and uh, you have to survive, but you have those machines Mm -hmm. that, like, you have to go and get scrap from. I actually really love that mechanic of, like, one, you have to kind of explore and put yourself at risk to find those machines, and then you have to get out there to grab that scrap, and you can spend scrap to make them more valuable, and it's just, it's it's kind of a cool um, system. Yeah, fun. Yeah, I haven't played that one in forever. I remember that one's fun. And Jack's yeah. birthday, it was a fun. I have one. not done Jack's birthday yet. It's hilarious. Okay, cool, cool, cool. Um, what about like ancient DLC? Yes. Because this Mega My Seat was there before Miranda found it, mm-hmm. that we know of. Like she stumbled upon it a hundred years ago or whatever. What if we go all the way back? Yeah, because you're referencing something that they talked about in the concept art, where they, yeah. they mentioned having, um, like, Some medieval, like medieval. And there, correct me if I'm wrong, but there's a there's like a document that you find uh, around the stronghold yes. that talks about it existing in the medieval Some times. Some like crusade or yes. something. Yes, 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 and it's it talks about how long it's been around. Yeah, Huber, you know, I think that would be so awesome. Like. Imagine a Resident Evil game where, like, the only thing you have is a fucking sword. It's a like, broad yeah. sword, yeah, dude. Just yeah. medieval. Yeah, that would be really cool. Because um, another conversation that I had, it was like, because my wife was, like, not into the Ethan molded twist, which I okay. really liked a yeah, lot. Yeah, yeah. But I think part of the problem was, is, like, outside of, like, them telling you that he's molded, he's just another dude with guns. Like, <laughs> that that part of him being molded doesn't really manifest itself in a gameplay way. Um, I guess and, just 
taking a lot of damage, but taking then you could say the yeah. you could say the same about like Claire, Leon. Right. You know, you right. get hit and bit so many times. Yeah, and I think it's tr- cool that they kind of like contextualize him putting his hand back together <laughs> yeah. and all that stuff. But uh, fair, like, yeah, fair. C- because you and I have talked about, like, what if you play as Rose? And it's like, mm. well, what does that even mean? Like, yeah. does Rose have telekinesis? You know, like, how are, we, how are you going to be able to manifest yeah. that power? Yeah. Because uh, cause you said, you were like, yo, what if Revelations 3 was, like, Mia and Rose? Yes. Would you, if we play as Rose, which which it's setting it up for. Yes. Uh, would you want to do, would you want to play as Rose in first person? Like, in Resident Evil 9? Or third person like Revelations three, what would you prefer? Because I imagine if you get wild with these powers, right? And we're a third person game. I mean, we're we're teetering on Devil May Cry potentially, <laughs> right? Yeah. <laughs> um, I don't know. I think why Resident Evil has been able to revitalize itself so successfully though is because it's it's taken big swings. You mm-hmm. know, it's 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 made stuff that I, I feel like people have to pay attention to. Um, but the reason why I thought of Mia and Rose in Revelations 3 specifically is I'm like, that's kind of the dynamic that, like, Moira and Claire have or yeah. Barry and Natalia have where, like, maybe Rose doesn't use guns, right? But yeah. she can disable enemies or she can just simply see things like Natalia could uh, in those sections uh where at, at, and then you'd have like mia right like let's say that she's been because chris is still alive she's been training with chris this whole time and, and it is like more capable with guns and so you have that kind of uh revelations dynamic where two players are kind of helping each other out in different ways that'd be so fun yeah. or mia goes like undercover connections oh man it's and like do they do they even know she's sketch like we don't know like, so much anything about the connection i know so, there's there's so many things man yeah yeah undercover connections would be really yeah cool because like imagine and that's what it's called undercover connections yeah, yeah that would be really neat is hunk still alive he's still alive he's well, out that, there oh man like you have like a, an undercover mia connections game and like hunk is there somehow dude yeah Last thing I remember about Hunk, obviously to remake, but like the Code Veronica document, there's one. Okay. Where he talks about like not getting enough information for a mission he went on and he was pissed. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Okay. That was it. That was the last. But that was like the training facility, so the document might have predated Resident Evil 2. I don't know, 100%. Well, you gotta be happy, Huber, and th- this is just speculation on my part, but like, the. After playing. Eight, and then obviously Revelations 2, the feeling that I have is like they're looking to bring back Wesker somehow. Like we're on the yeah, cusp of dude, like that picture. Some sort of, yeah, 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 yeah. Seriously. So, so that has to like be huge for you. Totally. I, I do appreciate all these new villains though, honestly. Mm. Like if Wesker never came back, I'd be I'd truly be fine with it. He had such a good run, such a good story. Right. Um you know, they they just if they keep knocking it out of the park with these new villains. I mean, from Jack Baker to Lady D, so cool. <laughs> well, the the thing about Miranda, because my wife is like, "What's the deal with Miranda?" Yeah, what and I was the like, hell? Because because the, the way that they and I just read this document like last night again. Yeah, it, it's like, well, uh, her daughter died because of the Spanish flu, and yeah. then she uh, went into a cave. Yeah. And she found the Megamycete. Yeah, was going to kill herself and then is super powerful. Yeah, and here we are. So it's like there's kind of like a beginning and an end and like the middle is just extremely vague. And it's super weird that like they had a relationship with the connections. Like yeah. Miranda and them. That seems like it'd be super tenuous. Right. But. Yeah, and but and the thing is she's just like, oh, they said they could help me out, but they made Evelyn and it was no good and like... <laughs> So weird. They, I feel like they try to cram like so much in like four tiny pages. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. And so the, the the reason why I bring that up is like them hinting at the Spencer connection yeah. is what gets me so excited because it's like, okay, this is somebody that they've spent multiple games fleshing out. So to get a new side of it, mm-hmm. I don't think I would feel the way that I felt about Miranda where it's like, I don't really know what happened to you. Yeah. Um, and so the idea of like, you know, having the central 
antagonistic force be connected to the past, I think could could be a little bit more uh, impactful in terms of who you're fighting. Yeah. It's wild. I mean, if, if, when we go back to the Spencer Mansion, when we, whenever we re replay one and we yeah. see that umbrella logo, totally different vibes now, dude. Like some Four Lords logo in a European village that Spencer was at. Like it's definitely... <laughs> Underwhelming to you? Were the they, logo? Were they, yeah, well, because they, they explain the origins of it, and it's just like, it's not even like really a big deal. I think the idea that he used that logo for Umbrella is really compelling. It's really okay. cool. But I still, there's just not enough with Miranda in him yet gotcha. for yes. it to like be fully amazing. But I love Dude. the idea that like the Umbrella logo was based off that. I, th I do think that's cool. Like, because you see the, the pictures of. Um... Spencer and, and Miranda, you know, from way long ago. Mm -hmm. Now that's a DLC. Like for yes. every other character that we talked about, you're playing as Oswald playing Spencer. As Spencer and, dude. and Miranda, dude. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Wow. Love it. Amazing. Um, the like d godfather of the series in a way, right. Spencer. Just right. like the arch nemesis. <laughs> uh, one other thing that I want to bring up, because like mm -hmm. in Resident Evil 6, you kind of have the face-off with uh, Leon and Chris. Mm -hmm. And, you know, especially, like, post-BSAA Chris and, like, sort of, like, bitter, jaded, hardened Chris, I think it would be kind of cool if characters that we've known kind of came to an ideological impasse. Yes. And you could see both sides where, like... Oh, okay. Like you decided to go this way, almost like a like a Marvel Civil War kind mm -hmm. of thing. When yeah. It, when it came to like rules or regulations or the various organizations that they're all working with, um, I think that would be really neat. And if you really wanted to be ambitious with it, like mm -hmm. you as the player get to choose who you Ooh. follow. Uh, ben, I love be this cool. because think about how many people now in the universe are affiliated with the BSAA. Mm -hmm. There's gonna be some kind of drama here of like, you know, to compete, we gotta embrace the bio weapons or right. like right. something like that. Or like why risk lives when we could just create right. a mutant to go in? Mm -hmm. Like there's some, there's some juicy stuff. Yeah, sure. totally. And I, I, I think that would be really cool. Cause I feel like for the most part, and I feel, I feel like Resident Evil lore is, like, so convoluted that, like, anytime I say anything, I'm like, well, maybe the, maybe there's, like, a stage play where this yeah, happens. Yeah, yeah. But, uh... Maybe some manga or whatever. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I, I do feel like they're, the major cast, for the most part, is kind of always on the same page. Like, they're always mm -hmm. in agreement with, like, how to get things done yeah. relatively, you know, not not perfectly, but, like generally on the same page and so it would be cool to have some some tension there i think absolutely see how rose shakes it up yeah because like <laughs> that was so interesting like that final scene is so crazy yeah. cause they had like guns trained on her mm -hmm. they could have killed her this little girl and she has right? like, like godlike powers potentially yeah. yeah and she's like taking shit from this agent right so there's <laughs> obviously distrust there like i don't know i feel like if they announce, like, Resident Evil 9, you're playing as Rose, I'm going to be yeah. stoked. Because there's so stoked. much that you could do with that character. And talk about a good conclusion to, like, the Winters trilogy, if we want to call it that. The yeah. cool way, you know, as her. I'm sure they'd add some kind of visions in there, like they did with Eight. Some kind of Ethan callback, and Mia, obviously. And I remember, you know, Dusk Gollum as well. People out there pausing that final scene, seeing mm -hmm. Ethan there. Who knows if that was a placeholder. Right. Or if it was actually him. Uh, watching that final scene again last night, I'm probably reading too much into it, but I'm like, man, they really spend a long time when Rose gets off the bus hmm. focusing the camera on her shoes and there's like a green symbol on her shoes. Hmm. And I didn't notice it really. I, I wasn't, it didn't click with me the, the first time I saw it, but I'm like, I wonder if that symbol is like a symbol of some organization that she's involved with or something. Dude. Because it's a very specific symbol. Gotta go photo mode that. Yeah, yeah. Zoom I'm in check it out. We gotta... We, Rose's gotta shoes. You, yeah, Rose's shoes. It's like a green <laughs> circle with something Dude. in it. Yeah, yeah. Awesome. All right, Ben. That was 
our a week, two weeks post Resident Evil Village talk. Uh, the full playthrough is going to be this Saturday at high noon on twitch.tv slash oh, easy so allies. We're getting Kyle Bossman to join. And Hopefully he hasn't seen the game yet, right? He says he's been avoiding it for Good. the full playthrough. Good, Good man. Game. Good man. Yes. So that'll be Saturday. Hopefully there's no te technical difficulties uh, along the way. But if you like what you saw, check us out on Patreon, Twitch, YouTube, all that good stuff. Hit like and subscribe. It helps us out. And until next time, see you then.